You know, it would seem that I've developed a bit of a reputation around these parts, and it's not necessarily a bad one, but I don't think it tells the whole Chuck Cassidy story. Most people think that I only do things the right way, and I only do things maybe the expensive way, or that I don't have to go back and redo things. Or maybe just that I've got extremely good luck when it comes to building. But I will tell you, none of those things are 100% true. Sure, I try to do my best all the time, but perfection is a moving target, and to be honest, it's one that we never hit. Am I right? So on today's video, I'm taking you on a tour, but it's a different kind of tour for three different reasons. One is that it's my bus. Big surprise there. Two is that it's not even finished. And three is that we're only gonna be looking at the things that I could have done better. The areas I left myself, lots of room for improvement. It's gonna be a fun video. I hope it's here to remind you that you don't have to hit perfect in your build either to be really happy with it. Stick around, make some popcorn. We're gonna go around and, you know, in the most lighthearted way possible, talk about all the things I could have done better on my own build. Yeah, nobody's perfect, huh? Well, before we get too far into this tour of all the things I've done wrong or could have done better or didn't think about, I want to let you all know, make sure you stick around to the end of the video. I've got a big announcement coming up that you're not going to want to miss. If you like my videos, if you like my live content and things like that, I'm going to be announcing a new program for people to participate in that can help support the channel and get some more of that Chuck content that you just keep coming back for. So stick around. But let's get back to all the things I could have done better. Eh? We're going to pick this up like we usually do and start on the outside of the bus and work our way in. Of course, this time we're going to be talking about the things that aren't as good as they could have been. And you know what? From right here, you know, if I get in with you, this looks like a pretty darn good looking bus. And I'm not saying it isn't, but I want to take you around and show you some things that I could have done better along the way, or if I had more time, or maybe if I wasn't so busy making YouTube videos while I built, I could have stopped to get it right. Let's start on this front door, which ain't a bad door, but it could be better. You might not catch it unless you look really close, but if you tune in right here, you'll see a masterful dent. And that is because when this door opens, it wants to hit this side view mirror bracket. And boy, that was that was a sad day right there. And maybe I'll get around to fixing it, but frankly, I don't have the time for that to make it on my list. It did inspire me to hurry up and make this door stop though. The other thing I don't totally love is that this door frame was so bowed out that I had to put another piece of one by two steel in here to give my jam a flat surface for the hinge to mount on. And when it came time to fill this in, we have a bunch of welds on here, so it's really structural, but in between the welds, because I didn't want to heat this all up by welding it continuously, we just filled it in with some Sika Flex. And it's holding up great, but a part of me wonders, we probably could have done something better there. I don't think I've ever had a bus this shiny in my life, or maybe even a car too. And it looks great, it looks wonderful, but the downside of having something shiny and glossy is that all the imperfections really pop out at you. Now, this isn't something that I think I would change. We actually did try to mat this back a bit and make it less glossy, but I'll show you some areas where I could have done things differently to get a better result. We're aiming for perfection. That's what it would take. Now, a lot of folks out there on the internet commented on why I didn't put sealer underneath these lap joints on my roof raise, and the answer is because on a lot of stock buses, they don't. And this double row of rivets, once you get paint on here, it's really gonna be sealed up tight. But if I did it differently, probably would have done the sealer between the panels instead of doing seam sealer afterwards because do you see how that seam sealer, see how it's kind of a visible ridge there? It bums me out slightly. I could have taken the time <laughs> when I was doing the roof raise, I guess, and snuck my sealer in there. The other thing that's also a bummer is areas like this where you just have, you know, if it was still a stock school bus, that wouldn't look too out of the ordinary, but once you put nice paint on it, all these little defects really have a tendency to pop, and I just didn't catch them or have the time to fix all of them before we got into the paint job. Now, the paint job is amazing, and this is no dig at Wes or me or Joe in our painting abilities, but we were in a rush because we only had a few hours in the shop to get it done. And things like this where, you know, we left the door handle in the down position when we painted and forgot to put it up. Oh, so, you know, there's a little shadow. It, you know, it disappears though when the handle's down. And there's another spot on the other side where we left the battery box open and it's got yellow showing still. So people will still know it was a school bus once. See, look, it's just a dead giveaway. <laughs> not too bad though. So this one is not a mistake that I made. I really like this one. But if you come over here, you'll notice I don't have one. And there is what appears to be a gray water tank mount hanging here. Well, originally I thought that I was going to put a gray tank in here 
and just have the one storage compartment on the other side. But after reevaluating things, I've decided I really, really would like that extra space here and that my gray water will actually work better if I can mount it up underneath the bus in the middle there. Better for weight distribution, but that's not really something I'm worried about. Now, what makes this a bummer, if you didn't notice, the bus is already painted. <laughs> and those boxes, yeah, they come white. So that means once it's installed, asking Wes to help me make it look like the rest of the bus. Luckily, I still have some leftovers, so. Now, normally, this would be an awesome feature on just about any bus, and maybe it still will be for mine. I went ahead and mounted a propane tank right here under my bus, because at the time, I was thinking I was gonna have a propane system. But as time has gone on, and I've gotten more data from how these off-grid electrical systems do in the field, because mine's gonna be relatively large, I'm gonna go all electric on this bus. So electric hot water and electric cooking. I'm using a diesel heater still for heat, but that means this awesome propane tank is kind of obsolete. Maybe I'll use it to run an outdoor fire pit or do the propane injection on the engine, I don't know. But it's here, it's quite a bit of work, you know, making this look all nice and uh, don't really have a use for it. Everything looks great here, but I gotta talk about what is missing. And that is a side view cam. I bought a set and then I forgot to install it and run the wires before spray foam happened, which isn't the end of the world. But then we also got the wall panels installed. And well, right now I just decided, I don't think I care enough <laughs> to go through the trouble of installing those cameras. I still have my backup cameras and that's great. I'm very happy to have those, especially because I don't have rear windows. But I forgot to put side cameras on. And you know what I realized though? You don't really need them. I've got these great mirrors here and all throughout my bus driving career, I never had side view or rear view cameras and I never backed into a vehicle or you know almost cut someone off. I did once side swipe a pole at a gas station, but I don't think I would have been looking at the cameras anyway. You know, everybody makes mistakes and when you get to those major milestones, it's so good to have a punch list and go through it. And you know, I ran the wires, but I forgot to install the units and connect them. Stay lobby. All right, let's go in. Oh, another thing I would have changed. I like this latch, but I think there's better ones out there. It just, you know, I don't know. It doesn't quite do it. It's not the one we always use. I branched out to do a keypad one. And since then, they've come out with better ones. So maybe I'll swap that someday. Still works great. And it's got the fob. So right away, everything's looking pretty good. And you know, I did wire and rough in everything before spray foam, but if you'll notice, there are all of these wires here. Well, those are going to my clearance lights because I did not have a chance to rewire all of my clearance lights before spray foam. It means I had to add them after the fact. And uh, you know, that wasn't the best. The, the best way to do it would be absolutely to get your clearance lights installed and wired and put little cups behind them for the slack so that when they get spray foam, there's, they're not locked in. You can still pull them out to service them. I would say lesson learned on that one, but I've done this before. Um, clearance lights take time. They're a big circuit. I like to wire mine in a loop so that the voltage drop is minimized across them. So it takes, it takes a little bit of time and when you're crunched. Well, if you're gonna pick one circuit, this would be the one not to wire. Now this one's a little embarrassing, everybody, but you see these wire splices here that I had to make? Yeah, that's because when I was setting all these wires up, I did not pull them tight enough into the corner of the ceiling here. So they hung down slightly and when the spray foam went in, it locked it in but too far down, you know? And so when we were cutting them and, you know, getting ready for our walls, there was just no way. The walls were gonna get in the way of the wires. So we had to go in and we had to extend oh, about 10 different circuits worth of wires, which I really, really wish I didn't have to do. But I did, all for the sake of making my walls go up as high as possible. It's worth it, don't get me wrong, but now this fella doesn't love putting splices behind his walls. Now you know that I love spray foam, but you must be careful with it from time to time. And here's an example of something that can happen. So this window box was installed before spray foam. The spray foam went in and they did foam this area. And if you look closely, you'll see it's got a bit of a smile. And it's not because it's happy. I'm fairly certain that's because as the spray foam cured, it contracted slightly and pulled this down. Spooky, I know. Now I know some of you are wondering now, what could that happen to other parts of the bus? You know, the side panels and things like that. And in my experience, I have not had that happen. But in cases like this, I actually have seen it quite a bit. And if you look, this is like about five inches of spray foam. And I think it's actually on the installer a little bit. He did a great job, but I think he went too thick here and that it all cured at the same time and pulled it down. So just something to watch out for. If you've got long open spans like this, I could have put a brace here, you know, that would have taken no time at all. And I would have made absolute certain 
that this didn't move. The top one, interestingly enough, didn't have that issue, but it wasn't sprayed as thick. I'm not the biggest expert in the world on spray foam contraction rates, but I think if you install it differently, you can avoid these results. I'm not sure if this is a mistake yet, but perhaps it could be, and that is not running hydronic heating loops in the floor. I know that's an expensive option for sure, but running the lines, it's relatively cheap. It does take a day or two, but it means that down the road, if you want to use a diesel boiler or any other type of hot fluid, you know, you can plumb it in with your engine coolant and circulate that through your floor. Well, you have the ability and it's not a big deal to add it. Now I've passed the point of no return. I'm not adding that to this bus, but having heated floors really is amazing. I, you know, in this project, I'm trying to keep it relatively simple. It's complicated enough. So I opted to not do that. I will think, I think I'm gonna actually put in a heated electric floor pad underneath the floors, just in the walkway to take the chill out. Um, but you know, that's a, that's a big load potentially. It's a couple hundred watts and I'm not gonna be able to run that in the winter off grid, unfortunately. But it will be there if I'm ever plugged in or if I wanna splurge for the evening. Hopefully I don't regret not having hydronics too much. Now, speaking of spray foam, check out how I messed up and did not mask this rubber seal on my back door. And now it's just, it's encrusted and it's frankly beyond saving. The bummer is these back door seals are notorious leakers and mine actually didn't leak. It was in pretty good condition. And now, I mean, time will tell, but they're not cheap and you know, finding this exact profile to replace this, ooh, that's gonna be a tricky one indeed. To call a Thomas parts person and see if they can help a fella out. Well, that looks like, and I'll just spend the next two weeks doing this maybe. Like a lot of vehicles from this age, my bus came with a set of sealed beam glass lensed headlights that were garbage at best. So I took it upon myself to do what the cool kids are doing and bought a set of LED headlights. Now, normally I buy headlights that are glass lensed with an LED insert, but they cost around 500 bucks. The upside is that that glass is very durable and won't cloud or scratch. So you can imagine my disappointment when after purchasing these, I discovered that they were plastic lensed and it's only gonna be a matter of time before those are scratched and clouded to the point where I'm not going to be getting the brightness out of them that I would hope for. Now, luckily, these being, you know, kind of cheap Chinese knockoffs of fancy LED headlights, they're extremely bright. Some would say too bright, and I've had to point them down and, you know, be careful about how I aim them because I want to blind people. So I've got plenty of brightness to lose, but if I could do it again, I would save my hundred bucks and put that toward a real actual LED replacement that uses the glass sealed beam housing that we all know and love because life's too short to be polishing your headlights back to clarity. Well, I think that's gonna do it on this tour of my follies. But before we wrap up this video, I wanna talk about what I promised I would talk about, which is a new offering from Chuck Cassidy Enterprises, and that is my Patreon. If you're unfamiliar with Patreon, it's a monthly subscription service that you can join to become a member and get access to exclusive content. And if you go down, the link, of course, is in the description. If you go down to there and click on the Patreon link, you'll see all of the offerings. I'm gonna be doing most of my live content on Patreon moving forward. It's just easier for me to do it that way and it incentivizes me to actually show up because if you haven't noticed, I've been slacking on that because, well, this guy's busy. So head on over to my Patreon, check it out. We're gonna have a good time there. There's gonna be some exclusive content and offerings that you're not gonna wanna miss. And it's another way for me to connect to you in a more meaningful fashion outside of the YouTubes. YouTube is great, but it's not everything. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you here next week. My name's Chuck Cassidy. Thanks for tuning in. Shoot. Just closing a toolbox door and starting a conversation with an imaginary person. <clears throat>